everyone! Today, we are going to discuss the different species of parasites. Together, let's make chess and understand their different morphology, life cycle and cause, incidence, control of disease in a population, transmission, pathogenesis, symptoms, treatment, and prevention. Let's start! First species, Schistosoma. Schistosomiasis is a chronic and potentially lethal tropical disease mainly caused by parasitic gut flukes. So there are five species of schistosomes that infect humans. But today, we will be focusing on Schistosoma manson and Schistosoma japonicum. Classification Kingdom Animalia Phylum Platyhelminths Class Trematoda Order Strigitida Family Schistosomatidae Genus Schistosoma Species Schistosoma manson For, dermor for dermorphology Schistosoma manson is a parasitic flatworm It is sexually dimorphic and dioecious So, ang ibig sabihin na Dimorphic means existence of two different forms as of color or size. Dioecious means having male reproductive organs in one individual and female and female in another. Adult male is up to 10 mm in length, more robust than the female and has gynecoporal canal on his body. Male tegument has tubercles and the dorsal surface. Tegument means outer body covering of members of phylum platyhelminths. Female is more longer, more slender than the male, up to 10 to 14 mm in length. And in length, female tegument is smooth. For the life cycle, depending on the species, Schistosoma eggs are spelled by feces or urine. The eggs hatch and release by feces or urine. The eggs hatch and release Miracidea, which swim and pierce particular snail intermediate host image under the right conditions. Two generations of sporocysts in picture and the creation of Circaria image are among the pieces in the snail. The infective Circaria swim after being released from the snail, penetrate the skin of the human host image, and shed their fork tails, forming Schistosomule image. The Schistosomule move to the lungs via venous circulation, then to the heart and finally to the liver where they mature and escape via the portal vein system. Adult male and female worms copulate and live in the mesenteric venues, which vary by species with a few exceptions. Schistosoma japonicum is found more frequently in the superior mesenteric veins draining the small intestine image, while Schistosoma mansoni is found more frequently in the inferior mesenteric veins draining the large intestine image. Both species, on the other hand, may live in either place and can move between them. For the host, Schistosoma mansoni recovered from wild primates in endemic areas but is considered primarily a human parasite and not a zoonosis. For Schistosoma japonicum, reservoir are the following such as cattle, dogs, cats, rodents, pigs, horses, and goats. For the epidemiology, Schistosoma is a common source of sickness in many regions of the world, especially in areas where sanitation is inadequate. Areas where human schistosomiasis is found in includes fresh water in southern sub-Saharan Africa, including big lakes and rivers, as well as the smaller bodies of water, possess a danger of infection. The Nile River Basin in Sudan and Egypt is also a transmission zone. Brazil, Suriname, and Venezuela are all located in South America. Dominican Republic, Guadalupe, Martinique, and St. Lucia, extremely low risk. For 
Schistosoma japonicum, it is found in Indonesia and parts of China and Southeast Asia. For the transmission, people with schistosomiasis contaminants fresh water, sources with their excreta will contain parasite eggs that hatch in the water and so spread the disease. For the pathogenesis, Immunologic reactions to schistosoma eggs trapped in tissues cause schistosomiasis. Antigens produced from the egg cause a granulomatous reaction in T cells, macrophages, and eosinophils, which leads to clinical illness. For the diagnosis, the presence of parasites in eggs in the stool or urine samples can be used to diagnose schistosomiasis. Antibodies and or antigens found in blood or urine are also signs of infection. Adult schistosoma worms dwell in venues of mesentery. Some eggs pass through mucosa of the intestine or bladder and are passed in the stool or urine. Others remain inside the host organ or transferred through the liver and are rare occasions to other locations such as lungs, central nervous system, and spinal cord. In fresh water, excreted eggs hatch, releasing Miracidea, the first larval stage which infects snakes. For the symptoms, when people are first infected, they usually have no symptoms. They may, however, develop a rash or itchy skin within days of becoming infected. Symptoms like fever, chills, cough, and muscle aches may appear within 1 to 2 months following infection. For the prevention, if you are in a country where schistosomiasis is prevalent, avoid swimming or wading in fresh water. Drink safe water. Keeping people out of high-risk environments such as irrigation, channels, and streets. Also, Parasites may be prevented from reaching the skin by vigorous towel drying after an unexpected extremely brief water exposure. For the treatment, treatment for both urine and intestinal schistosomiasis is possible with safe and efficient medicines. Praziquantel, a prescription medicine, is used to treat schistosomes infection for 1 to 2 days. Strongyloidiasis is one of the major soil transmitted parasitic diseases. Species of Strongyloidis, Stercoralis, and Filiborni belongs to Kingdom Animalia, Phylum Nematoda, Class Cesarnontia, Order Rhabdytida, Family Strongyloididae, Genus Strongyloides, Species Strongyloides Stercoralis. For the morphology, Strongyloides stercoralis is one of the tiniest parasitic infections known to humans. Female tilariform larvae are slender and fast-moving, measuring about 50 meter in diameter and 350 to 600 meter in length. Male tilariform larvae are thought to be non-parasitic. For the life cycle, the Strongyloides stercoralis life cycle is complex, alternating between free-living and parasitic cycles and involving auto-infection. In the free-living cycle, rhabditiform larvae are passed in the stool of an infected definitive host and develop into either infected filariform larvae. Image or free-living adult males and females image who mate and produce eggs image from which rhabditiform larvae hatch image and eventually become infected filariform. The parasite cycle begins when filariform larvae penetrate the epidermis of a human host. This second generation of filariform larvae is unable to mature into free-living adults and must seek for a new host in order to continue life cycle. When human skin comes into contact with polluted soil, filariform larvae enter and travel to the small intestine. 
the L3 larvae are supposed to travel through the bloodstream and lymphatics to the lungs where they are coughed by and ingested. L3 larvae, on the other hand, appear to be capable of migra migrating to the intestine via different paths. The larvae molt twice in the small intestine before becoming an adult female worms. For the host, Strongyloides stercoralis is primarily, par primarily a human parasite. Strongyloides species are generally host-specific. Other primates such as chimps, monkeys, and so on, as well as domestic dogs have been found to have patent infections with parasitic females. Domestic cats have been shown to be susceptible to strongyloides stercoralis infections in the laboratory, but it's unclear whether they serve as a natural reservoir. In non-human parasites, primates, all over the old world, strongyloides filiborni, subspecies filiborni is found. Sub-Saharan Africa is the source of great majority of human illnesses. From Southeast Asia, sporadic cases have been documented. Papua New Guinea cases have been documented. For the epidemiology, except for Antarctica, strongyloides is found on all continents. However, it is most prevalent in the tropics, subtropics, and warm temperature zones. Although the global frequency of strongyloides infection is unknown, researchers believe that 30 to 100 million people are in affected worldwide. For the translation, strongyloides stercoralis is classified as a soil transmitted helmet. This means that the primary mode of infection is through contact with soil that is transmitted with free living larvae. When the larvae come in contact with skin, they are able to penetrate it and migrate to, through the body, eventually finding their way to the small intestine where they burrow and lay their eggs. For the pathogenesis, Strongyloides larvae penetrate human skin, travel to the lungs by the bloodstream, break to pulmonary capillaries, ascend the respiratory system, are ingested and develop in the intestine about two weeks. Larvae that do not come into contact with humans may mature into free living adult worms in the soil where they can multiply for several generations before re-entering a human host. For the diagnosis, a blood test is most accurate way to diagnose strongyloides infection. Strongyloides infection can be identified by looking for the larvae in the stool under microscope. For the symptoms, Strongyloidiasis generates no symptoms in around half of the cases symptoms that may be present includes a cough, a rash, red hives at the arms, vomiting, weight loss, upper abdomen burning or pain, diarrhea or alternating diarrhea and constipation. For the prevention, wearing shoes when walking on soil, and avoiding contact with feces or sewage are the best ways to prevent strongyloides infection. The keys to prevent through prevention include proper sewage disposal and fecal management. For the treatment, because of possibility of developing hyperinfection syndrome and are disseminated strongyloidiasis, all people infected with strongyloidiasis should be treated whether they are symptomatic or not. Furthermore, patients should be tested before starting any immunosuppressive therapy, especially corticosteroids. For the last species, Tinea solium infection or Tiniasis is an adult tapeworm infected intestinal infection that occurs after consuming contaminated pork. The pork tapeworm or T. solium 
is a parasite that can cause two types of infections in humans, tinnitus and cysticercosis. Tinnitus solute is a fourth tapeworm. Tinnitus saginata is a fifth tapeworm. Southeast Asian ident identified third species in humans known as Tinnia asiatica. Tinnia solu belongs to the kingdom Metazoa, phylum Platyhelminths, class Cestoda, order Psychophilidaea, family Tinnia D, genus Tinnia, species Tinnia solu. For the morphology, Tinnia solu has a white flattened ribbon-like body. Is a triploblastic accumulate that can reach a length of 2 to 3 meters or more. The scolex or head is 1 millimeter in diameter, globular in shape, and bears four circular summers as well as nostalgia with a double of roughly 30 big and small hooklets. The elongated body known as the strobula follows the short neck. For the life cycle, humans are the only true hosts. Adult cysticercosis cellulosae worms are exclusively discovered in humans after consuming undercooked pork with cysticercosis cellulosae larvae. Adult worms dwell in the upper section of the human intestine jejunum. Before or after leaving the host, Gravidpoglotid releases 30,000 to 50,000 eggs. Stools are contaminated with eggs and segments which contaminate vegetation and water. Pigs and humans both eat the eggs. The larvae hatch from the eggs in the stomach, pass through the intestinal mucosa, and settle in various regions of the pig or human body, mainly the muscles. They grow in cysticercosis cellulose larvae here. In those who have been infected with adult worms, this can also happen owing to auto-infection. The eggs regurgitates from the gut into the stomach. Hatching, the larva enters the bloodstream, leaving larvae ingested with undercooked pork. Flesh develop adult worms in the human intestine. For the host, humans are normal definitive host for Tinea solium and Tinea saginata, while pigs are the intermediate host for Tinea asiatica. For the Solume infections are more common in underdeveloped communities with poor sanitation and people who eat raw and undercooked pork. People in Latin America, Eastern Europe, Sub-Saharan Africa, India, and Asia have had higher incidence of sickness. Tinea solume tiniasis is common among Latin immigrants in the United States. Tinea asiatica is only found in Asia, primarily in South Korea, China, Taiwan, Indonesia, and Thailand. For the transmission, human acquired Tinea solium tinaisis by eating the parasite's larvae cysticerci in undercooked and infected pork. Tinea solium eggs also be transmitted to humans through poor hygiene via fecal oral route or ingesting contaminated food or water. For the pathogenesis, their arms collects can occasionally irritate or inflame the mucosa of the intestine. Cysticercus cerulosaceus are more harmful. They are the source of potentially fatal sickness. Auto-infection by finger contamination with eggs from cranial skin or feces. For the diagnosis, to detect eggs and proglotides, a small, sam a small sample should be examined under microscope. A biopsy investigation of subcutaneous nodule is required to discover cysticercus cerulosae. If the larva is calcified, on X-ray inspection may be useful. For the symptoms, the most common intestinal symptoms of tinaisis includes abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, constipation, and diarrhea. Prevention. Pork that hasn't been fully cooked should be avoided. 
Fesses contaminated vegetables should be avoided. Human fesses must be properly disposed of. It is necessary to maintain high level of sanitation which should be thrown for 5 days at 10 degrees Celsius. For the treatment, Tania Solium is used to treat denizies in order to prevent urocystic ergosis and to aid in managing or terminating the parasite transmission cycle. The treatment can be done on an individual basis or as preventive chemotherapy depending on the local circumstances and the control approaches being implemented. Anti-parasitic treatments, corticosteroids, anti-epileptic medicines, and our surgery are used to treat cysticercosis in the neurological system, neurocystic ergosis. Each, each patient's treatment is always tailored to their specific needs. That's all for our discussions for today. I hope you gain knowledge to different species of parasites. To wrap up, again, schistosomiasis is a disease that is caused by parasites. Genus schistosoma that enter humans by attaching to the skin, penetrating it, and then migrating to the venous system, to portal veins where the parasites produce eggs and eventually the symptoms of acute and chronic disease. Healthcare professionals diagnose schistosomiasis by identifying characteristics, eggs, feces, urine, or biopsy samples. For the strongyloides, strongyloidiasis is caused by strongyloid stercoralis infection. Abdominal pain and diarrhea, rash respiratory systems including cough and mist, and eusinophilia are among the findings. The presence of larvae in stool or small bowel contents as well as occasionally in sputum or the detection of antibodies in blood are used to make the diagnosis. Ivermectin, albendazole, Corticosteroids are used as treatments. For the last, it's important to draw a distinction between tinea solium and tinea sagittaria infections because tinea solium infection can lead to neurocystic ergosis, which is one of the leading causes of foodborne illness deaths. Tinea saginata Cystic ergosis is uncommon and tinea saginata has much lower impact on human health than tinea solid.